the epic One Punch Man formula. Random villain shows up. Everyone hypes him up because he's so strong. He beats some heroes that seem to be strong. Gets one shot by Saitama in the most satisfying way, yet simultaneously the least satisfying way possible because we didn't get an epic fight. It's like watching a hentai, but no nudity. And to everyone that says, but Nox, I thought you like One Punch Man. Yes, of course I like One Punch Man. Just, just like I watch hentai for the plot. I mean, people who don't watch hentai for the plot are uncultured and will not like the upcoming hentai philosophical analysis series I'm working on behind the scenes. Disgusting! But that aside, Blast seems to be following a very similar formula to all of this. Yes, this is an overpowered analysis on Blast, a character that I will not spoil at all because he doesn't even show up in the manga or web novel yet. And no, that is not a spoiler. Okay, yes, it is a spoiler. It's, it's a spoiler by default that he didn't show up as opposed to anything he did, which I guess kind of does tell you what not to expect. So, sorry for the reverse spoiler. But when I said sorry, it was just to deflect because honestly, I don't give a damn. Nuxtaku. The most sarcastically, assholy, honest YouTuber of all time. Now, spoiler warning aside, you're probably wondering, but Nux, your OP analysis series, despite the fact that it covers overpowered characters, which includes their build-up, as well as their takedown, it also covers the philosophical elements that make up what makes this character great in the varied thematic settings I encounter. And yes, that is the main reason why I love my OP analysis series and why I'm doing more of them because they're so much fun. And I feel like since people like overpowered characters in general, this is a deeper glance into what truly makes them great behind the scenes aside from the power. So I'm very happy to make this video because Blast is an overpowered character. And today I will be covering the greatness of why he isn't even here. As a one punch stan if you do like this video i'd be more than inclined to do more op analyses on the various overpowered characters in the series i mean the s class are defined as the most overpowered of heroes so honestly i guess i can find a way to wheedle into making a video on all of them <laughs> i probably won't do all of them but i will just do my favorites especially king because he's uh basically the all might of one punch man right <laughs> I want my mommy. That was a rhetorical question, don't answer that. Because you were thinking he's the Lord Escanor of One Punch Man. But Jesus said, oh ye of little faith. And I know what you're thinking, fan base. I'm in your heads more than I'm in my own. So you should definitely subscribe. Anyway, the enigma that surrounds Blast is absolutely fascinating. Because, as I've mentioned, in the One Punch Man hype formula, there's the period of hyping up how strong the character is, whether we see them doing a hell of a lot of push-ups or beating up Genos. I mean, those are the two most common things that take place in the One Punch Man universe. And then Saitama, inevitably, who seems to be forsaken to his fate of not finding an opponent strong enough, will end the fight in one punch. Now, this never gets boring due to the greatness and adequacy of one and how he writes each character in each situation to symbolize different things, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Man, do I love One Punch Man. If you pay attention to the characters hyped for their strength to be annihilated by Saitama, first of all, it's always villains, and second of all, they never survive their respective arcs. This is an overarching hype that never existed for any other character in any other capacity. This even fits the bill for Garrow. Even though he's an overarching villain and he shows up a lot over many arcs, he isn't built to be hyped as a villain that can take on Saitama. He's beaten in the chapter he's introduced haphazardly. This gives the inclination that Blast stands above all else. Now, the fact that he's a hero also makes things very interesting because no matter the dire situation, if it does not pique his interest, he will not show up. Uh, hey Blast, are you actually gonna fight or something for once? N no, but I, no, I, I mean, come on, you haven't fought. No! Okay, fine, jeez. <laughs> Ochaku is cute.
The world is crumbling, fam. Monster Association bastards are everywhere. And Blast is drinking tea on Honolulu with some bitches. I don't blame him. Probably where I'd be if I had an option of the two. But it's not very heroic, is what I'm trying to say. He clearly has a slightly morally ambiguous ideology, and he only does whatever the hell he wants to do whenever the hell he wants to do it. Basically, he's like a hero, but like just for fun or something. Sound familiar? Well, yes, that is exactly why Blast is such a fascinating character. Because everything that we don't know about him are things that we do know about Saitama. So in a series where we're focused on Saitama's growth entirely until he could find a point where he can fight an opponent that actually is a challenge for him, Blast is the perfect character to hype. Not to mention the fact that one of the greatest superheroes in all of anime, you already know who I'm talking about, yes, Buzz Lightyear's catchphrase is BLAST! Buzz Lightyear to Star Command. But first there was BLAST! Clearly paying homage to the greatest hero in One Punch Man. I see no other possible explanation for this. Let me know your opinion on this epic theory in the comments. But as far as Blast goes, there's so much serious speculation about who he is. If he truly is someone looking for a powerful opponent like Saitama as a perfect mirror, why wouldn't he show up when the Monster Association attacked? Perhaps the leader of these monsters will actually be a challenge for him. Perhaps Boros, when he invaded the planet, will be a challenge for him. For whatever reason, he did not get even slightly excited by either of those things. He's clearly not a clone of Saitama. Yet despite that, every bit of evidence that we understand about him and his mentality fits exactly with what we understand about Saitama. From the silhouette we've seen of him, he does have hair. So perhaps he only did 99 push-ups, 99 sit-ups, 99 squats, and a 9 kilometer run. We'd definitely explain that one away. So I bald! What's your problem, huh? And his suit is also the very simplistic type superhero suit that Saitama wears. The series already pulled a king, so we know he's actually that strong. In fact, in the manga was stated that Blast terribly injured Elder Centipede in the past, and Elder Centipede wanted revenge. So we know he's actually powerful. But this brings forth so many theories as to what he can actually be. He's hyped unlike any other character, and therefore our mind is always working in who he is. But before that, you have to realize something really fascinating. Our perspective of the series is always shifted towards Saitama, and therefore any threat, no matter the size, <laughs> is just dumbed down by the fact that we know Saitama could take him out in what as I've mentioned in my video on the genius of threat levels in One Punch Man, our perspective of the world should be completely different than the perspective of every inhabitant. We see every opponent as someone that will beat up Genos and then get destroyed by Saitama, while everyone in the world actually has a sense of fear. Threat levels exist because despite the fact that they mean nothing towards Saitama, they mean everything towards every other character. Now, something important that should be noted, Blast's presence changes the perspective of the Hero Association, just like Saitama's presence changes the perspective of every viewer. And here's why that matters so much. Just like Saitama is a hero for fun and he kind of wanders around and takes down any opponent that happens to cross his path, there is that threat in regard to everyone else. They don't know when Saitama will happen to mosey by. So therefore, there is always that threat. However, for us, Saitama is lingering in the back of our mind that he could take anyone down. Saitama is in the middle of a tournament, and the city outside is getting destroyed. Yes, I will do an entire analysis on the beauty of the tournament and how, despite the fact that our intrigue is being pulled by something fake, something so much more prevalent is going outside, and yet we are blind to it due to sheer naivete of what's going on in the universe and how that trans translates perfectly into Saitama. Saitama doesn't realize what's going on out there either. But the beauty is, in our minds, every threat is dumbed down by the sheer understanding that Saitama exists. And despite the fact that threats mean something to the rest of the world, to them it's also dumbed down to the extent being that Blast exists. Saitama's a hero for fun, and seemingly so is Blast. We don't understand his motivations or ideals at all, and that's what makes it so interesting because we never know when he will show up. Up. We understand his power, we know he's something of legend, and it may sound kind of meta, but he's society's version of our Saitama. Of course, being that there is this being that seemingly rivals Saitama, perhaps even surpasses him in a way. I mean, he didn't even show up yet, he was hyped for a hundred chapters. 
Who knows? Well, that brings forth so many more theories. That's just a theory. If anything that we understand about the world of One Punch Man is correct, Saitama is the absolute strongest, and that is how the narrative seems to be pushing forward. The narrative is clearly more of a psychological story than a physical one, with Saitama overcoming obstacles, being making friends, not being wiping out alien overlords that have destroyed galaxies in their way. So what could Blast actually be? Could Blast be someone else who removed their limiter and found no price to life? Lost interest in anything and isn't a hero for fun, but just is a hero by coincidence? Perhaps he didn't release it to such an extent and he hasn't reached Saitama's level of suffering. Or perhaps he is someone far more vindictive than Saitama. Saitama dreamed to become the strongest hero that can take down any opponent in one punch, genuinely for the good of humanity and because he had love saving people. The only time in the entire series we saw Saitama genuinely happy and thrilled was when he saved King in a flashback before he obtained his immense power. Perhaps Blast amassed it for recognition as opposed to for becoming a hero. This in turn turned Blast into the most recognized powerful hero but doesn't per se leave him wallowing in depression whereas Saitama's spin on becoming the most powerful hero leaves him in an existentialist state where he doesn't understand the purpose of his own existence. Or you could look at things differently in another way. Perhaps Blast will be the final antagonist of the series. That's the most prevalent theory. Finally, Saitama will find an opponent that he can face on even terms. He'll have a tough fight and win. Yay, a happy ending. I'm not dead. And I don't think that's how it's gonna end. That's stupid. That doesn't sound like one at all. I think it's far more likely Blast will actually be a hero. Maybe a hero for fun. Maybe not the nicest dude on the planet, but a hero nonetheless. And when he shows up at the end, Saitama's gonna be like, whoa, maybe this guy will actually be a challenge for me. Maybe I should fight him, but he's a hero. So it'll be up to Saitama, whether it's worth fighting a battle on a global scale that can literally decimate the solar system with their collapse gliding punches, or maybe it's worth living in this state of never finding an adrenaline rush again thanks to the friends he's made along the way. Maybe this fight will not be worth the chance, and will be left ambiguous as to who's stronger in the end. I could very well see that be a potential solution, and potentially a final solution to Saitama's issues. I know some people like my friend Teking thinks that Blast is Saitama from a parallel universe, or perhaps went back in time 10 years to even the battle. But whatever it may be, the intrigue of Blast's existence and the fact that even though he's around somewhere, he is not showing up for the most dire of situations plants a seed in our mind, which will grow into a fascinating character when he actually does make his appearance, if he makes his appearance, if Blast actually somehow still exists. I mean, I personally think he's either Lord Twigo or Moomin Rider wearing a tank top, but hey, let's not jump into theories here. If you really think of what Saitama's character is right now, and the reason why he fights any fight either happenstance he's walking past the villain and he just tries to annihilate him. Or perhaps the villain will be an actual fight for him so he'll take him down. Or his friends ask it of him. If you pay attention in the manga, every monster he fights, not by coincidence, is a monster that someone was cowering before that begged for his help to save them. Blast, however, despite the cries of the Hero Association, fighting these dreadfully powerful opponents does not show up. The only difference between Blast and Saitama, two heroes that are just playing around for fun, doing whatever they see fit and whatever they want, is Saitama is there for his friends when his friends require his assistance, whereas Blast is not. No amount of citizens writhing in agony calls Blast to their aid, whereas Saitama does not want to see anyone suffer despite the fact that, for himself, he does not really care. For himself, he does not feel fulfilled. However, he himself has people that he calls friends. The fact that Blast, an overpowered hero that we've never met, can pose such philosophically deep questions as to his identity in regard to Saitama's, his identity in regard to the world, 
and what his motivation can be and why his absence of motivation would not apply to someone like Saitama, who seems to be in the very same boat, is what makes him such a fascinating character, even though we don't know who he is or if he exists. When I say that a character is hyped to no end, like take Madara, for example, from Naruto. He was hyped in the first Naruto vs Sasuke battle in episode 135 of Naruto, and he only showed up 400 episodes later in the war arc, with this evil plan going throughout generations that we only saw bits and pieces of until he finally made his arrival, and it was epic and he fought the five Kage and holy flipples, he dropped meteors down. That's like next level Naruto jutsu. I mean, damn boy, they used to throw shuriken and kunai and this guy is dropping meteors. The main difference is Madara's dummy thick, and even though he tries to hide his legacy from his opponents, the clap of his ass cheeks is just too loud and powerful, and summons meteors. That's not exactly the philosophical difference between Madara and Blast, so if I had to phrase it in slightly different words, throughout the series there was foreshadowing for Madara's imminent and cataclysmic arrival, whereas in One Punch Man, there is never foreshadowing that Blast will ever come. All the mentions of Blast are that he exists. So to paraphrase, even though we don't directly learn of Madara's ideology, we understand that he has an extremely powerful ideology backing his actions that surpass generations. Blast is the only foreshadowed, overpowered anime character that may potentially be an end boss of a series where there's more evidence pushing to the fact that he has zero ideology and zero motive than anything even slightly complex. Nicely mirroring our protagonist, Saitama, who unlocks like Naruto, who is very ideologically driven, has zero motive and zero ideology as well. With Blast, an overpowered character not even existing, he somehow manages to remain as a perfect foil to Saitama, a character growing closer to his friends and saving them from monsters when Blast does not. So, whammon and gentle whammon, here you go! A 15 minute analysis on a character that may or may not exist, analyzing the overpoweredness of someone who never even showed up in their story. Yes, I did give this video thought. I am very happy with how it turned out. <laughs> in fact, <laughs> it's the first time I ever made a character analysis in a character that never did anything or never showed up and we only spoke about him like three or four times. But it matters, fam. In One Punch Man, it all matters. So smash subscribe if you enjoyed this video because I intend to do more overpowered analysis on more of the S ranks as well as Saitama himself. And of course, <laughs> <laughs> Moving rider in a tank top, obviously, goes without saying. And leave a like if you thought this video was interesting in any direction. That would be dope. Let me know which aspect to the One Punch Man world you would like me to make a future video on in the comments. I love One Punch Man and I am more than happy to oblige you. Link in the description to my Twitter. Feel free to follow me there as well as to my Patreon. All patrons are invited to the Discord server where we hang out and make fun of me. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you did enjoy this video and for all those non-believers saying there's no way Nux can make a video on a guy that never existed well <laughs> no one ever said that because I think you uh, at this point you think I'm nuts enough that I can make a video on freaking Saitama's wig in the tournament I made a whole video on the mosquito god damn it I'm not sure if now you have faith in me or if you have no faith in me but regardless remember to stay weird fam